Elizabeth Clare Prophet preaches the everlasting gospel and brings to you the true teachings of Jesus Christ and the illumination of the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Mother, Amen. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go unto Judea again. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, 
he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. This reading from the book of John, our beloved Lord, has placed upon my heart to give to you this evening. We begin with seemingly the hardest of miracles and of healings. The point is that though the body be dead, yet the living Christ may call it forth. Though the soul, the heart, the pulse be dead, to the living Christ, so that Christ may call it forth. It is the command of the mighty threefold flame to descend and to recommence the beating of the heart. If Jesus had not performed this miracle, we would not have the faith today that though our nation or our economy or our government be dead, yet the living Christ may call it forth that it may rise again. Who dares to call forth the living spirit back from the underworld or the astral plane? Only the living Christ in you. It was the healing ministry of Jesus Christ and his miracles that made the fallen ones seek to destroy him. If you desire the true healing ministry of the living Savior, Jesus Christ, you must be willing to walk the path that he walked. You must be willing to have me walk the path that he walked. The fervor of your belief in your own Christ self must measure up to this experience, that your Christ self, in the name of Jesus, 
may call forth that which has died to return to life. Jesus told me to stand before you this evening to call to your souls to come forth, that all might be quickened and none might remain dead, dead to the spirit, dead to the truth, dead to their own godhood, or even to the living vital experience of the brotherhood. Even in the grave, Lazarus had a choice. The Lord commanded him, and he obeyed. He could have disobeyed. Is not this a great mystery of God? Lazarus was not his slave. He was his friend whom he loved. He called him back from another octave, perhaps a fairer place, perhaps a place of Elysian fields, a re-entry into those halls where we meet all loved ones. The higher octaves are much to be preferred. Why did Lazarus return, not only to be obedient, but so that the Son of God might be glorified, so the victory over death might be proven, so that the resurrection from the dead might be known for a commoner and not alone for the Son of God. Why did Lazarus come back and why did Jesus call him? He called him that the disciples might learn the lesson of faith. Yes, he could have prevented his death, but the great dramatist designed it otherwise. How much more dramatic that he should die and remain in the grave four days. It seems that the non-belief in the capacity of God increases with the length of the death itself. And so, Jesus emerges within my heart and your heart as the healing Savior. You have called for this. You have called for healing. And so he comes. I am asking you, should he pay the price for your healing, or should you pay the price? Which will it be? I will pay the price, Lord. I will pay the price, Lord. I will pay the price. It is a wondrous thing to witness unto the miracle of God and the healing of God the power of Christ to forgive sin, to either set aside or balance karma, to give new opportunity, and a resurgence of the resurrection flame in your heart. What a wondrous thing to behold the miracle of God. Let us listen to Jesus' promise. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you believe in the Christ in Jesus, though any part of you were dead, yet shall you live. So powerful is the belief in that Christ who is real that your belief is an arc of love and the instantaneous return to your heart is his quickening of your threefold flame, calling your threefold flame back from inaction, calling your soul from inactivity. We supply the current and over that 
comes the healing power. This is the true path of initiation. No free passes to this event. When we truly know the ascended masters, we know the path, we realize in studying the life of Jesus that he did exact a commitment, a statement, or an act. Take up thy bed, thy karma, in which you have lain and groveled for centuries, and walk. You can only walk if you take up your bed. And in some cases, the requirement was already manifested. And so he said, go in peace. Thy faith hath made thee whole. He didn't say, I have healed you. He said, thy faith hath made thee whole. Always the faith in the person of God. It's the givingness of that something. This is the flower or the fruit the gift to the incarnate word. Something of self, one for one, the divine exchange. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. It is a statement of reincarnation, if you believe it. It is a statement of the eternal resurrection. It means that he shall never die the second death. Why, it is common sense that many have believed in Jesus Christ and laid down their physical bodies in the change called death, yet they have not died. And some have reincarnated again. Believest thou this? When Christ is asking Martha, do you believe this? He has actually imparted to her the understanding of a profound mystery and a formula. The affirmation of his identity, I am. The I am in me is here and now, not in some future day. Here and now, the I am in me is the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe it? Yes. Then say, Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ. I believe that thou art the Son of God, which should come into the world. The Son of God, which should come into the world. And so the affirmation, which was required for this healing. Lazarus did not have his voice to speak, to offer that compensating light. And so the omega polarity of the divine descent of Alpha was provided by the liberating power of the word. This is the science of the spoken word. It is the mantra. It is the decree. Can you imagine yourself saying this once a day, three times, to your Christ self, to beloved Jesus Christ? to the Christ of the messengers and all the ascended masters. How many people have ever made a mantra of this affirmation? Yet here it is. It's been in the Bible since John wrote it. This wonderful mantra. We've come full circle for 2,000 years through the night of Christian misinterpretation to the moment of Aquarius, and what do we find? We go all the way back to that point. And because we have the understanding of the word, we now know that what Jesus did was to call forth, to demand from the soul of Martha 
his mantra for you, for your resurrection, for eternal life. He demanded it of her, and he knew it would come forth. For he had taught her, he had loved her, he had raised her up. The mantra did not stop with, I believe that thou art the Christ. The Son of God, which should come into the world, means that her soul accepted the mystery of the incarnation, the mystery of the spirit of the living God coexisting in the physical flesh form. It was not enough for her to confess that Christ merely as Christ, here, there, or anywhere. She must acknowledge that he was the Christ in the flesh. It was the flesh of Lazarus that received the current the magnet to bring forth that threefold flame and start that heart beating again. In the flesh, in my flesh, I see God. This is the great belief that is so unbelievable. People like to think that the flesh is apart from God. They like to think that the flesh is perhaps sinful or ugly or mortal or carnal or dirty or somehow a lesser creature, but the mystery of the incarnation as that the word was made flesh. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world in the flesh. Most people do not walk around thinking about their Christ selves in their flesh, in these cells, in this blood, in this life, coexistent and shining, radiating, bursting forth with joy. Most people think, well, I speak, and then once in a while, my Christ self speaks through me. That's even more of a mystery than the incarnation. <laughs> so there you go. Jesus left him be dead for four days to show the ludicrousness of human doubt and fear. They could understand that he could have prevented his death and maybe called him back a few minutes afterwards as he had done others. But four days, no way, it was too late. Even he couldn't do it. <laughs> they had a flesh and blood Jesus that was a God, but they didn't understand the mystery of the incarnation. This is a great mystery. It takes two, doesn't it? There is Jesus, the one who pronounces the word, who holds the focus of Alpha, the I am presence. And there is the friend, the disciple, this poor one and that poor one, focusing the Omega. Was there ever a healing or a miracle if there was not Christ and another? the great mystery of the divine polarity of God. In reality, you supply the equal portion. Isn't that most beautiful that the law demands of us that response? The law has placed in us the word so we can give the affirmation of our belief. I believe that thou art the Christ the Son of God that should come into the world. God put the power of speech in you, the power of Elohim to create. God did that. You don't even have to try. You know the language, you hear the words, you can repeat it. Think of this, how you are endowed with a living word. And this, too, is the incarnation. How could the power of God flow through your lips and bring about wonders of life if there were not the mystery of the incarnation there 
in the very chakra of the power of the will of God. Have you ever thought what a tremendous thing it is to coexist with Christ in your flesh? Now think about these modern computers that talk to you on the telephone or anywhere else. They say words and they repeat them. Do they raise from the dead? Does the simple ability to wag your tongue and move your lips and make a sound give you the power to perform a miracle? Yet you are performing miracles every day, are you not? Well, then who is performing them? Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, he's already there. And you have to awaken hour by hour to this tremendous moment in your destiny. So you see, it is God who gives speech, a very special kind of speech, a speech through which the miracle occurs. And you have been taught it as the science of the spoken word. And you know when you give this speech, this certain speech in the full power, of your God presence and Christ self, something takes over and it is the Holy Spirit and the miracles are wrought around the world and God is given the glory. Other times you may chatter, idle chatter. Perhaps you may never stop talking, but nothing really happens. And that's the mystery of the withdrawal of the word. The unique thing about Jesus is that he was that word, first, last, always, and forever. The word was in him. The word was with him. You can become it too. And you hold on to your faith by the moments of victory when you witness the incarnation where you are. 